I often say that building a direct connection with your audience should be your number one priority. If you rely solely on traditional media like radio play or newspaper reviews in getting the word out and finding listeners, then the odds are stacked against you. Let's think about it. How many news articles do you read a day, print or online? One or two? How many times do you make it to the music section? How many review slots do they have? Maybe six? You can forget about being one of them. The Beatles have a new record out. So does Springsteen. Even Tay-Tay is outnumbering everyone with new album releases here, there and everywhere. She is an absolute machine. How do you get one of those remaining slots when there are thousands, hundreds of thousands even, in your same position, all trying to get noticed? Speaking of getting noticed, I am going on a UK tour in autumn 2024. Details in the description below. Traditionally, you'd painstakingly craft a press release, tailor individual emails to music journalists if you can find their details at all, press send, and then hope for the best. You'll probably be one of a thousand emails they get that day, or a thousand Instagram DMs, and maybe they're distracted that afternoon and don't see it. Maybe they've moved on and their email doesn't even work anymore. Maybe they're just about to read and listen when their colleagues suggest it's beer o'clock and bam, their coat's on and they're out the door. Your email forgotten forever as it just sinks out of view. You could hire a publicist, of course, if you have a spare couple of monies. <laughs> They'll tell you all about their plans, say they have amazing contacts, great working relationships with journalists, but no promises. And at the end of the day, they might say, Hey, we tried, but Springsteen's got a record out. Dua Lipa, Tay Tay, you get the idea, on to the next client. It's the same with radio. You can drop a few months rent securing a handful of plays using a radio plugger. They'll happily take your money. But again, they guarantee nothing. And if they do succeed, how do you know who's listening? What's the best investment for you and your career? With every penny or cent you spend, you should be thinking about how it finds you a true fan. So my number one rule, invest in yourself, not others. There's never been a better time to use new technologies like social media or newsletters to build an audience. Because the content you create lasts, you can build up a catalogue over time. The barriers to entry are low and the rewards can be high but only if you put in the work. Making YouTube videos gave me an opportunity to showcase my personality, put my music out there and find my tribe because I was ignored by the media. I still am, no hard feelings, it's tough out there, but because I don't rely on them to get the word out, it just doesn't really affect me. And it's still not too late to get involved, far from it, because it's estimated that YouTube's global user count will reach 2.85 billion by 2025. 2.85 billion. Let that sink in for a hot second. So if you're on a creative journey, take time to think about your strengths as a musician. Maybe you're a killer bassist who slaps harder than Will Smith. Maybe you're a saxophonist who's nailed circular breathing, or you've got a really inventive acoustic cover of a popular song in your back pocket. What can you offer audiences? How can you entertain? What can you teach? How can you brighten their day for just a few minutes? Because it's time for you to put yourself out there. Talking of putting yourself out there, if you're interested in starting your journey as a songwriter, then check out my new online course, The Craft of Songwriting. There is a link in the description. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, I'll be seeing you here again very soon.